Most Americans spend between 10 and 15% of their overall budget on food. Unless you're one of those who have learned to photosynthesize the sunlight and therefore have foregone food entirely. In which case, kudos to you. But for the rest of us, if you can just save uh, 10 to 30 percent on your overall food budget, that can mean hundreds to thousands of dollars a year that you can save and really enjoy that and spend that much, much better on things that bring you a lot more value. So today I'm sharing some tips on how I save money on my food budget. Some of them are a little weird, but most of them are pretty cool and hopefully it can help you guys out as well. Let's get into it. Ugh. All right, so the first one is name brand stuff. Now, these are Quaker oats. I don't know where I got these actually. Uh, so these are around 350 to $4 per like package thing, depending on where you get it. And then there is this right here, which is 250 per package thingy. So it, usually it's at least a dollar less than this. So this is just a name brand of market basket. But then there are these little things where, I'll show you where I got this in a second so that it was actually relatively the same price. But if you look at it per ounce, this is about like uh, five to six cents per ounce. This is about nine cents per ounce. And then this is about 20 cents per ounce. So this is twice the price of this, which is almost twice the price of this. This doesn't just apply to oats. This can apply to everything. A lot of times uh, there'll be beans, which are pretty much the same thing, or juice, or tons of different stuff throughout the floor. If you get the generic brand, you can save instantly like 25% throughout the store, uh, depending on what store you're at and all that type of stuff. And usually it's almost the exact same stuff. Personally, I like, uh, this is Market Basket, which is a New England thing, you probably don't have it. But I think this actually tastes a lot better than these and a lot of store brand stuff is actually uh, a lot better. Now some things you are gonna have to choose what you wanna pay for because there are definitely name brand things uh, that taste a lot better. But a lot of times it's just a waste of money to get something that you're more comfortable with. We also try Try to avoid package stuff as much as possible because a lot of times when something's in a package you're gonna end up spending uh, usually at least double the prices if you got it in a bigger package so that could be uh, with little things of rice or like we saw with the oatmeal if it's just in a smaller package or it's pre-cut like pre-cut fruits and vegetables uh, a lot of times you can spend over twice the amount just to save you know a few seconds on pre-packaged stuff like you can get those little like individual packets of instant rice or you can get this giant thing and this is probably like literally like a hundred times cheaper because this whole thing was like eight bucks or something like that and we've been eating like half a bag that has lasted us over a month and a half and we have it like a couple times a week if you can just avoid processed stuff and just pretty much anything that comes out of a box not only will you save a lot of money but you'll end up being a lot healthier and it just comes from try not to get anything out of a box don't get you know potatoes out of a box get some regular potatoes they're not that hard to cook you can just wrap them in tin foil and throw them in the oven you know uh, a lot of stuff is not all that hard to cook and you can save at least 50% than if the same exact things were in a box they're already cut up or whatever it can also make a big difference where you decide to stop for instance shopping here compared to here as opposed to here, this is Trader Joe's, as opposed to over there, that's Whole Food. It's all gonna be very, very different. So it's really important to know your stores well and which things are gonna be good deals at which stores. But there's also a super secret hack. Let me show you. This is actually one of my favorite places right here. Uh, they sell discounted like bulk food to restaurants. So not all of it is a great deal, but a lot of times you can get really good deals, things that are close to expiring. Maybe they have a week left and it's like a dairy product, like a yogurt. Yogurt. And it'll be instead of like four dollars, it'll be 99 cents or two for a dollar or stuff that's uh, kind of crazy like that. So I would recommend looking around in your town, typing in like discount food place, discount whatever, or wholesaling food or something like that, and then you can find a place like this. And a lot of times you can get a good part of your groceries. Usually not everything you need, but a very good part of it from at least like 25% to 50% cheaper than it would be elsewhere. One thing that I have learned throughout the years is it's super, super important to understand unit prices. So usually there's like a regular price and the next to it there's a unit price per pound or per ounce or however they do it. So just by looking at that, you can determine what things are a good deal. And sometimes it's actually cheaper to buy the small things like with beans. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy the small can rather than the big can, even though you think the big can, you know, would be cheaper, but sometimes it's not. And you can look at a bunch of different things so that when you see what's this five pound bag of rice compared to this one serving pound of rice, 
or what's a K cup compared to the exact same coffee but in a pound, I think it's actually like four times more expensive to do the K cup than it is just to do like the loose ground coffee like per ounce. So you really have to ask yourself like how much time would it take to make that coffee and is that worth it to you? Would you pay four times more for the individual K cup. And that goes with just so many different things. So it's really super important to start looking at the unit price and not just the overall price before you make a decision. That way you're making sure that you're very informed and you understand what you're getting yourself into and you can make sure that you're getting the absolute best deal possible. All right, if you guys are enjoying this so far, getting a little bit of value, please feel free to drop a like and also subscribe. We got a couple rapid fire here. Uh, one of them would be when you go to the store and something's on sale, like maybe they'll have uh, buy three, get the fourth one free or anything like that on essentials that you use all the time. Usually it's tin foil or you know anything like that. Then we try to stock up on those things when they are on sale, whether it's meat or anything else, trying to buy a bunch of the things that are on sale. Not too much if it's things that can go bad, but enough that we can end up saving that usually 25 to 50% when they do go on sale. Use the app. A lot of stores nowadays will have an app that you can just use on your phone or on your laptop. That way you're guaranteed to stick to your list and you can't have those impulse buys at the at the stores or oh that looks great. You just you take all of that out when you shop on the app and you just have it delivered or have it picked up and you have to calculate is it worth it to spend you know however much it costs to have things delivered or is it worth you know the time to go there because you have to calculate the gas money and also the time it would take you to do that. But of course if you do end up going to the store just make sure you don't go on an empty stomach you end up buying a lot more stuff, but not speaking from experience. So I try to eat relatively healthy and I am very cautious about what I put on and in my body with going from more natural deodorants and shampoos and stuff like that to trying to have healthy food. So the question is, should we be spending the extra money on organic or is it better to go with the cheapest possible option? Uh, to be honest, for the most part, I just go with the, the cheaper option. I'm not too worried about going organic, but there are some things that might be more worth it than others. For instance, there's this thing called the dirty uh, dozen. So these are vegetables and fruits that have more pesticides on them than other ones. So usually they're ones like apples and strawberries. Take this with a grain of salt. This doesn't mean you should avoid those things. Kale is one of the top ones on the list. But I'm still gonna buy kale. If I have that choice between like uh, non-organic kale and no kale, non-organic is still a zillion times better than like 99% of the other foods that you're gonna eat. So just take this, you know, with a grain of salt. Don't let it scare you from having those things. If maybe the price is too much to go organic and you decide to forego apples entirely, it's still gonna be better, uh, in my opinion, to have the non-organic apples than no apples at all. So here's the list for 2020. We got strawberries, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, and po. Potatoes. So that's just something to keep in mind next time you go to the store for pretty much everything I don't do organic. The only thing I do is meat and eggs. I make sure that everything's like grass fed and no hormones and all that type of stuff. Mostly because I watched a horrifying documentary and I have had trouble eating meat that is not like farm to table local uh, meat since then. It kind of messed me up so I wouldn't recommend doing that. But yeah, the, the stuff that they do to process even just like normal chicken thighs and legs and you know meat is quite horrifying. So if you don't want to know about it, don't look it up. But if you do, you know, want to be very cautious about what you're putting in your body and you're okay with spending more um, to have that peace of mind and possibly feel better and be healthier in the long run. Uh, then that might be something to look up, but I won't I won't bore you with the gory details. <laughs> all right, so a couple other tips that have made a huge help for me is planning out all your meals ahead of time and then making a list uh, to go off of when you go to the store so you don't end up impulse buying. Uh, and when you do go to the store, don't look at automatically at eye level stuff. Usually they're gonna be the most expensive things at eye level and then the cheaper brands are gonna be above and below it. So kind of look around, uh, shop around, take that extra few seconds and you can save you know, uh, a ton of money every time you go to the store. So have that list, stick to it like your life depends on it. A lot of times, especially around here, the perimeter of the store is gonna be healthier than the aisle. So like all your fruits and vegetables and your yogurt and you know, all that type of stuff, your juices, your eggs, all that's gonna be around the perimeter of the store, your meats. That's gonna all be around the outside, whereas the aisles are all gonna be packaged, you know, pre-processed stuff. Now there are some things that you need, you might wanna get beans and all that, and that's gonna be in the interior as well. But for the most part, if you can stick around, you know, as much as you can the outside of the store and get things that aren't really in packages and aren't processed, that's gonna save you a ton of money and it's gonna be a lot 
healthier. So that's what I got for you guys. What are the tips that you have been using to save money uh, on food? I am always looking for better tips. I didn't really go into couponing or anything like that uh, in today's video. That's obviously you could do a, a ton of stuff on that, but I just wanted to go, you know, what are the big main basic things that everybody can do no matter where you are, no matter what store you're shopping at. Those are just some of the tips that I use. So I will see you guys next week.